Hey, what's up YouTube? I'm stoked that so many of you have been asking me to talk about Cryonics, the Polish death metal band. Ah, no, you wanted to hear about Cryonics with a Y, the ultra low temperature manner in which to theoretically preserve humans? You know what? That makes so much more sense. When people think of cryonics, the technology behind cooling and preserving a dead human with the hope of reviving them someday, they often think of it as the stuff of science fiction, the obsession of eccentric death-phobic millionaires, or Forever Young, that early 90s movie starring a pre-bonkers Mel Gibson. I do love that movie, to be honest. Before we go any further, let me say that just like anything you choose to do with your body when you die, be it getting embalmed, cremated, or preserved through the use of cryonic technology, I support your right to a choice. If it inspires you to start the death conversation with your loved ones or to contemplate your death, more power to you. But I can't really recommend cryonics. First, it may be the least eco-friendly death practice out there, which as you know is kind of my thing. And second, despite what many sites tell you, cryonics is not cheap. You're essentially paying tens of thousands of dollars, if not way more, for a gamble on life extension, which says, no, screams death denial to me. So now that that's out of the way, you may want to know what exactly is cryonics? Let's start with the difference between cryonics and cryogenics. Cryogenics is the scientific study of extremely low temperatures, below negative 150 degrees Fahrenheit. Cryonics applies cryogenics, but they're not the same thing. Cryonics is taking a legally dead person and cooling them in liquid nitrogen to the point that decay mostly stops. The hope is that in the future there will be technology that will revive the frozen folk back to good health. Importantly, even though the person is legally or clinically dead, so, you know, dead, in the world of cryonics, they don't see them as actually dead or in the state of absolute death. They're instead in the process of death, in an in-between revivable state where the heart has stopped, but the brain's essential information is intact. And with the proper cryopreservation procedures, it's a state more like a coma. Cryopreservation's first priority is preserving the brain. In theory, a person's personality, memories, and mental functions are undamaged when they are revived. Undamaged, so, you know, you're not gonna be a zombified slave revived in a future dystopia, <laughs> no. Don't worry about that. You're just gonna get to see flying cars and stuff. Have a great time. If a person chooses, there are cryonics facilities that will preserve only the head, or neurocryopreservation, which is a more cost-effective option, only like $80,000. In this case, a person will not be revived until the technology exists to regrow a body and transplant the brain. The future! If a person chooses to preserve their whole body, which can cost up to $220,000, the aim is to reduce metabolic rate to a virtual halt, so that the body is pretty much frozen in time, and any ailments beyond the limitations of current medical technology to cure can be cured in the future. Cryonicists maintain they are not attempting to raise the dead. They are merely slowing the death process to an imperceptible rate. It's not science fiction, it's just science. So what's the science? It all begins when the heart stops. In an ideal situation, a cryonics team would spring into action immediately after a patient is pronounced legally dead. Alcor Life Extension Foundation in Arizona even recommends that their patients relocate and receive hospice treatment near their facility, so as to allow for the smallest amount of time between clinical death and the beginning of the cryopreservation process. The first step is to move the patient into a circulating ice bath, inducing hypothermia and slowing the body's biochemical death processes. Alcor administers medications like heparin and propofol while the patient is in the ice bath. Heparin is an anticoagulant, and propofol makes absolutely sure that a person doesn't wake up in the middle of the cryopreservation process, which again, is not a Twilight Zone nightmare, no. Don't worry, nobody worry. Nobody no worry, worry, nobody worry. In addition, other drugs like neuroprotectants, antibiotics to prevent bacterial growth, and Maalox 
yes, that Maalox, to stabilize the stomach's pH are administered to the patient so to ensure that their body will not be damaged in the death process. Cardiopulmonary support is then administered in order to circulate these and other medications to stop blood vessels from collapsing. Once the patient has been transported to a cryonics facility in an environment that is cold but not freezing, their blood is replaced with an organ preservation solution like that used in organ transplantation. Oh, if you opted for the getting a head package, that's just your head, it's at this point that your head would be removed from your body. Either way, now the vitrification process can commence. Do, 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 do. Vitrification is how cryonicists avoid the formation of ice crystals in the human body. If ice crystals form in the body, cell membranes are damaged, destroying vital tissues like those in the brain. Instead of creating a crystalline state, like with ice, vitrification transforms the body into a solid, glass-like state. Alcor uses a vitrification solution called M22, while the Cryonics Institute uses an in-house solution. Both are basically medical-grade antifreeze for people. The actual process of vitrification is rather delicate and takes incredibly long. Due to the toxicity of solutions like M22 at higher temperatures, the cryoprotectant solution must be carefully administered at only slightly higher concentrations every time the body cools by one degree. Nobody said becoming a cryonaut was easy. Once the patient, or patient's head, patient's head, is chock full of cryoprotectant and in an almost entirely glassy state, they are submerged in liquid nitrogen, where for several days the temperature is slowly lowered to negative 320 degrees Fahrenheit. At Alcor, a crack phone, yes, really, is placed on the brain of a patient to monitor what else, any cracking or fracturing the brain may experience during this final cooling phase. Once the patient has reached the optimal cryopreservation temperature, they are placed safely in an insulated holding unit until they can be revived at a later date. For the record, no human has yet to be revived from cryopreservation. And sometimes the cryonicists just abandon the bodies in a vault to unfreeze and decompose, but that was years ago. They're much more reputable now. As of January 22nd of this year, Alcor has 155 patients preserved and waiting to be revived. And worldwide, over 1,500 people have signed up to be preserved through cryonics. And while hardcore cryonicists believe that a future where we can cheat death is nigh, I'm not quite ready to start saving my pennies for a future where my vitrified brain could maybe be harvested from my vitrified head and inserted into my regrown body. But that's just me. What about you though? Are you ready to get glassy? Tell us in the comments. And as a note, this video is about cryonics specifically, not my larger thoughts on life extension, the singularity, etc. That's a possible future video if there's enough interest, but there's already gonna be enough life extension bros in this comment section to last me a lifetime. I sense them. They're already here. Hi boys. This video was made with generous donations from death enthusiasts just like you. Girlfriend in a coma, I know, I know, I'm putting her in liquid nitrogen. So, you know, dead.